my name is Maria Jose Aguña and today we'll be discussing a study called Nine Ways of Looking at Apologies and the Necessity of Interdisciplinary Theory and Methods in the Score Analysis. First of all, the score analysis is the most interdisciplinary of all aspects of language. Sharp distinctions were not explicitly recognized among disciplines. It was only in the 19th century that they were segmented into university departments. Uh, fields such as social and physical sciences became more complex in the late uh, 20th century because of the departmental and boundaries became more essential in order to preserve order and identity. Social sciences seem to have had a more of a problem in deciding what to do when ideas spill out of their disciplinary receptacles. Uh, linguistic is a paradigmatic case. Uh, considered as the scientific study of language. But then we can ask, what does language pro properly include? Some linguists interpret language as language alone, and they draw a line, uh, line at the point where analysis involves interaction or persuasion uh, or anything we do with words, and others incorporate this into linguistics. In a central subdivision, we will discuss language in isolation, and this study discusses the necessity to create an inter, cross, and multidisciplinary approach for discourse analysis, an area that borrows from and contributes uh, to many uh, fields, both uh, within linguistics and outside of it. And to illustrate this, uh, the example of the speech act of apology will be used. Um, why this core analysis is interdisciplinary? Because to do the job of a discourse analysis, the analyst must have uh, resources or findings and methods of other subdisciplines. Uh, there, there is no discourse analysis otherwise. Uh, we, uh, for this, we have to understand apologies as contribu contributions of a larger discourse uh, viewing them from the, a variety of perspectives, formal and functional, uh, cognitive and interactive, uh, individual and group, or interlanguage and societal. Apologies are particularly good examples, theoretically rich, as well as practically important. Um, apologies can be explicit uh, to and formal, um, formal ambiguously indirect expression of sympathy, advanced modification of bad behavior, or formal public displays or currently appropriate feelings, um, as an example. Uh, apology uh, places uh, psychological burdens both on its marker and less uh, seriously on his re uh, recipient. There is a type of apology such, such as an, an ambiguous apology form, uh, for example, I'm sorry for eating your ice cream, but this is rarely uh, found. Um, another example is uh, conveying regrets, or in extreme cases, uh, responsibilities might be explicitly assigned elsewhere. Uh, when you say, for example, well, someone left the ice cream on the refrigerator, or even uh, the uterus might be denied uh, that wrong do it was what occurred at all. Uh, some forms of apologies refer specifically one on their functions. Uh, for example, when you take responsibility for your acts, uh, recognize your wrongdoing, which for forgiveness, abjuration, or bad behavior. Of both uh, formal or functional levels, apologies have the tendency to be ambiguous in general. Um, an example of this is uh, the phonological and non-verbal expressions of apologies. Considering the fact that in English there are no specific sounds associated with canonical or appropriate apology, there do exist a suprasegmental and non-verbal levels that are important, especially for the addressee, in the determination and acceptability of an apology. Uh, these levels are the basis for the hearer's uh, judgments about the apologizer's sincerity 
are on sufficiently of remorse. Uh, some examples of these not verbal expressions are breaking the voice when you are apologizing, biting your lips, uh, or not looking at the aggressive face uh, uh, directly. And now my classmate will continue. Good afternoon, my name is Pamela Mires. Well, there are some differences between an explanation, a justification, and an excuse. First, in an explanation, the speaker takes responsibility for the action, but suggests that the aggressive finds it bad because he or, or, or she doesn't understand it. In an excuse, the speaker denies either he, his or her own responsibility or ability to do otherwise. And, and a justification, uh, the speaker denies that the action was bad. But maybe what differs an apology from an explanation, explanation is that the explanation benefits the speaker and the apology their adversary. Also, a speaker tend to avoid the action of apologize, uh, and that's why they look for indirect forms to do it. For example, when I say, uh, I want to apologize, or I'd like to apologize, or or I guess I owe you an apology. The role that we play or that we want to play in our report is very important and the syntax provides us uh, with the tools to represent ourselves as we would like to be seen. In the discussion of the speech of Austin in 1962, he talks about utterances uh, rather than propositions uh, or sentences because he was talking about uh, language use rather than form. Australian uh, analysis can help to explain the numerousness and the specific forms uh, of apologies. For example, I am sorry I... Uh, in this case, the speaker uh, is showing regret. Uh, I guess I... The speaker is assuming responsibility of the action. Uh, I shouldn't have... The speaker is assuming that the act uh, was wrong. You must be pretty mad. In this case, uh, the adversary was hurt. I was a real jerk to the speaker is putting himself one down. And I will never do it again. The speaker is promising that the action uh, uh, will, need, will be no repeated in the future. Austin speaks of some speech acts as requiring certain form of participation on the adversary part to be felicitous. Uh, he may say that no apology could be felicitous, but the fault uh, would reside with the adversary rather than the speaker. A speech act Theory helps to explain why people is dissatisfied with his attempts. Sometimes what is uh, required in apology is of some under several categories. Apologies are not the same in all the contexts. For example, uh, when they are with their family, friends, uh, their boyfriend, the apologies are not the same, they are different. Uh, when an apology is properly made and accepted, both parts become satisfied. A good apology convinces both the speaker and the adversary. We need to consider that at the moment of apologizing that some people tend to think that some apologies may include some things that other people think that are not necessary. For example, uh, there are people who think that if the person who is apologizing is not crying or shaking their hands, uh, they are not honest. Okay, uh, that, this is our presentation. Thank you very much.